In this issue of Real Magic Magazine, Mike Miller talks to NFL Pro Bowl long snapper John Dorenboss about how magic lifted him from tragedy and changed his life forever. Uh, how did you get involved in magic? So, uh, you know, when I was uh, uh, 12 years old, um, I, I lived a, a normal life. We kind of had a Brady Bunch family. Uh, my dad worked for Microsoft. My mom volunteered at the school. Uh, and out of nowhere, my, my dad murdered my mother. And so um, I went into some foster care for temporary foster care, and then I moved down to Southern California where my mom's sister, my aunt, raised me. Susan, uh, right? Yeah, Susan. And it was during that transition that I saw a guy named Michael Gross um, perform. He was 16 years old. Uh, sponge balls in my hand was the first trick I saw. Then he did a match, and he just looked at it, and the flame went like six feet up. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, he did the David Roth portable hole. Mm -hmm. He did a matrix, uh, four cards, four coins. Um, and it was by far the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And at that time in my life, when I was kind of bouncing around, it was something, M Michael Groves took me to Seattle. I got J.B. Bobo, uh, J.B. Bobo, the, the, the coin, coin magic book. book, yeah, and he got me uh, some sponge balls. And I just started learning moves. I didn't do a trick for probably a year and a half, two years. And I just started learning moves, and I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do, because I knew I was serious in the magic. I mm -hmm. knew I wanted to do it. And uh, that's, how I, that's how I got into it, and I've been doing it ever since. So a tragedy, magic helped change your life forever, basically, Yeah. because of a tragedy that you had to deal with. You know, um, I, I've been very, very fortunate. Uh, football has taught me a lot about myself, and so has magic mm -hmm. on, on a very personal level. And uh, at the darkest time in my life, or one of the darkest, uh, magic was something that I could, again, I could sit in a room and I could be happy. And I didn't really realize it at the time, but when I'd sit down and shuffle a deck of cards, and, and, and I saw Ricky Jay's, um, he did a, a documentary. Right. And he, he kind of, he said, like, people that, that don't do it don't get it, but, like, shuffling cards can be so therapeutic, and you can think about so many different things, and, and you can relax. Well, that was doing that for me. But it also taught me a lot about myself that I, w I didn't even realize that I would spend so long learning to move, and eventually I'd learn it, mm -hmm. and I'd get it down. And it taught me just what I could do how difficult something was, but if I made up my mind, I could find a way to get there. Right. And, and it taught me a lot about um, overcoming adversity and challenges and, and just sticking with something, and eventually you'll get it. But, you know, persistence breaks down resistance. Also in issue 42, Doc Eason talks to Garrett Thomas about the importance of acknowledging your environment. In the middle of something, I had a crowd going, and the people walked in the door. The door to the restaurant's right behind this camera here, and people, and they have to go down this little hallway into the place. So right in the middle of something, hey, how you doing? Welcome to the cellar. You're here for dinner? What? Right there at the, you know, and I, you know, engage. I get engage them. They can suddenly they're they're recognized. They're obviously there. There's no reason to not somehow acknowledge them. You don't necessarily have to insult them or, or you know, be rude or whatever else you want to them. But but um, it's there. Same thing. The guy goes up. You know, gets somebody gets up and goes to the, you know leaves the bar. I said, is there something I said? Are you leaving? You know? Oh, I, I, yeah, I can tell by the look in your eye you're looking for the men's room. That's right down around the corner. Mention my name, you get a good seat. Ha, ha, ha. You know? Uh, we got a little poker game in the men's room in a few minutes. We'd like to have you stop in. Get a seat open for you in there. The only game in town where a flush beats a full house. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. So, so, many, so you got a bit. Yeah. You know? Everybody, you know? So uh, why not uh, use everything that you, you've got going here? Kainoa Harbottle shares how the structure of the Japanese tea ceremony relates to magic. Christian Painter picks up some vibrations. Tyler Erickson continues his series on the false transfer with freeing the hand and destination motivation. And Gara Thomas discusses the benefits of creating a musical score for your routines. I looked at the structure of notes in a song, like Mary Had a Little Lamb. It's a note and a word. Seems pretty simple. But then I looked at a full composition where you have the violin parts, the bass parts, the uh, flute parts, where a conductor would have to look at all these different layers and still keep it all in time. I realized that magic is a lot like that, that there's a lot going on. It's not just a voice and a note. Uh, it's not just one level of stimuli. There's a lot of things that are happening. You have your words, you have your actions. Not only do you have just normal actions, but you have secret actions as well. Uh, then you have what you want them to see and what you want them to think and feel. Then you have your own expression, your own emotion. So what I did was I took that look of the conductor's sheet music and I decided to line up one of my favorite tricks the way a conductor would. In this edition, we have five tricks to teach you. Three from Liam Montier, 
one from feature magician John Dorenboss, and one from John T. Sheets. And I'd like to show you something that goes along with the crazy man's handcuffs. I call it band fusion. You start with the bands apart and they melt together and without any moves, they melt back apart. All this and much, much more.